Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Deva Param Brahma, Aspai Shri Gurave Namaha, Chinmayam Yapiat Sarvam, Prailokyam Sacharacharam, Arpadam darshitam jena tasmai shri gurave namaha Vameva matha chapitha tvameva Vameva bandhus chasakha tvameva Vameva vedya Om Sahana Babatu, Sahana Bunaku, Sahabiryam Karabahai, E Jaspina Vadita Mastuma Vid Vishavahai, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So where are we in our text? We're in chapter three, number eight. Chapter three, number eight. Can you help us out, please, Puni? So our discussion has been a much more in-depth negation of the five koshas. Going on. Kartritva Karada Babhyam Vikri Tanta Ritriyam Vignana Manasi Anta Bahi Bahishchaite Parasparam The inner organ functions as the agent and also the instrument. Hence, the one illustrated as two, that is the intellect sheet and the mind sheet. Their fields of operation are the inner world and the outer world, respectively. So, what we have is this mind stuff, which is frequently called chitta. Sometimes we'll use the word chaitanya. And the image that works for me is if you think of the chitta, like the monitor on your laptop or desktop. And then various functions come up. You can click on Microsoft Outlook and it looks like a mail program. You click on Microsoft Word and it's a word processor. You click on Excel and it's a spreadsheet. You click on Google Chrome and it's a browser. So this chitta forms as sense perception, as mind, meaning feeling, judgments, etc., as buddhi, as intellect, and also as karta, the agent, the doer, and Bhokta. Bhokta literally means enjoyer, but here it means experiencer. And all of that is witness. 
by consciousness, by awareness. Sometimes you'll see some uh, writers will use mind with a capital M to refer to all that stuff. Those of us who read uh, some of the, the works of Nisargadatta Maharaj, like I am that. He'll use the word consciousness for this stuff of the mind. And he uses the word awareness for the ground of being. The words are not what's important. The point is, don't get too hung up in the classifications. Or is this the intellect or is this the mind? You know, is this a sense perception? Is that in the intellect or is that in the mind or in the body? Don't worry about it. If you can be aware of it, it's some program that's coming up in your field of awareness. The important thing to know is it's not you. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. There is a position or function of the intellect which at the time of enjoying the fruits of good actions goes a little far farther inward and catches the reflection of the bliss at the end of this enjoyment, merges in deep sleep. This is what is known as the sheep of bliss. This is the bliss sheep. So what happens is, when the stuff of mind is projected outward into the world, always just a low level sense of irritation, of agitation, discontent. Why sometimes I just can't sit still and my mind just won't effing slow down. It just keeps going. That's it, this big shape of shape. Always going. So, in two different situations for the ordinary person, that shuts off. The first is when I satisfy a desire. So first I determine that an object is dear to me, priya. Then I endeavor to get proximate to that person, place, thing, or situation. Moda. Then what I call the point of pleasure. And desire, an object of desire, become one. Kramoda. And here he says, it's when the mind ceases its agitation, it comes home. And I get a kiss of the bliss. There's still a level of ignorance. That's what we call it the Ananda Maya Kosha. It's still a sheep. We experience the Ananda Maya Kosha in its fullest in deep sleep. What does everybody know in deep sleep? You can't even think what you know. You have to wake up first and go, I must have slept soundly. I don't know anything. Vidyaranya doesn't address this, but there is a state called Vasanananda. Vasana Ananda. I call it snooze alarm bliss. So you wake up in the morning, the alarm has gone off, you hit the snooze button. Oh, just another 10 minutes. And you punch your pillow and you roll over. Oh, it's just so delicious. 
Uh, and you're right on the edge of deep sleep, but you've got just enough mind there to enjoy it. And then you think, oh, I've got to call so so late in the day. And I have that report due at the end of the week. They need to move some money from this account. Oh, I've got to talk to this relative. They're upset at me. You know that feeling? And then what happens to the bliss? It's like the, the morning fog that you find that comes in through the Golden Gate. And you see the mist in the fog. And then pretty soon as the day goes on, it just evaporates. It goes by bliss. Why? Because the big shape Shanti has returned. Now, the mind absorbed in the self is a blissful mind. In samadhi, even the ana, the maya kusha is gone, meaning pure ignorance. The mind comes home. I know what's going on. All right, next verse. At the motorcycle races. Kara jet kat bato natma. Syadananda Mayopyayam Bimba Bhuto Ya Ananda Atma Sao Sarvadas This bliss sheet also cannot be the self because it is tempor temporal and impermanent. That bliss which is the source of this reflection is the self, for it is eternal and immutable. Yes. So Oftentimes, when we see these three great terms that indicate the self, Satchidananda, Sat, your existence, Chit, your being, pure sentience, Ananda, bliss absolute. Well, I'm not blissed out all the time. But if it's the self, it's supposed to be eternal and constant and changeless. Something isn't working here. So what the scripture means by ananda is not an emotional mind state. Because the self is bliss absolute, the fountainhead, the source of all joy, the mind can be blissful. But the Ananda Mayakusha rises and falls. Sometimes the object brings me joy, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I have a restless sleep, but you, it's changing. It's impermanent. The bliss of yourself, Ananda, is not a feeling. It's your self-nature. Just like the waves are the substratum, excuse me, the ocean is the substratum of all the waves. Now, when the waves stop waving 
and they become the quiet ocean. Or can you say there's a distinction between the ocean and the waves that are no longer there? So when the projecting mind ceases, it's projecting. Go there. Don't try to figure it out. The thing to be known is the world does not have inherently joyful or misery producing qualities. I attribute those to them by sanskara, my impression. The world is bad. It's just shunyata. It's void. It's empty. There's no such thing as worldly pleasure. <gasps> I'm supposed to give up worldly pleasures, let go of my attachments to them and seek the self. Well, that's for beginners. The truth is, the only joy there is, is the mind abiding in the self. I can either do it in ignorance by dancing with the objects, or I can do it consciously, knowing that it's just a mediated form of experiencing the bliss of myself. And I can also have a non-mediated experience. There's not two pleasures. There's not spiritual bliss and worldly pleasure. The worldly pleasure does not exist. What I think is worldly pleasure is Krishna. It's the bliss of myself. But in my ignorance, project my own self nature out there and then go running after it. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Nano deha mukakramya nidranandanan nidrananda anta vastushu mabhutatmatva manyastu nakinchidnu guyate. Objection. By granting that the body sheets, sorry, by granting that the sheets beginning with that of food, body, and ending in that of bliss, joy, or sleep, are not the self, yet when they are negated, no further object remains to be experienced. Yes. So is ultimate reality is zero. When I negate the panchakosha, the five sheaths, is ultimate reality. Empty. These, this is the, the position of what we call the Shunya Vadas, the disciples of Sunga. It is a school of Buddhism. Not all Buddhists say this. But they attribute consciousness itself as a quality of the inner equipment. And when that's negated, nothing exists. Now, Vigiranya is going to say, uh uh, something may disappear. We grant that when you're in the deepest meditation, and you've let go of all your attachments and identifications, something does disappear. Meaning this jiva bhavana, the sense of being an individual. 
absolutely a discipline. But by virtue of what do you see it disappear? Simple. You see there's a phone in my hand? Yes. You have knowledge of it. You see there's no phone in my hand? Yes. I saw it disappear. Go away. So I illumine the presence and absence of the ego sense. Something there is that's always there. So the objector is just not really clear on his own direct experience. He's caught up in faulty logic. When I've negated the five koshas, there's nothing left to experience. No self going on. Padham nitradaya sarve nubhuyante na chetaraha Tathapyete nubhuyante yenatamko nirad yenatamko nivaraye Reply True, bliss, sheath, etc. are experienced and not anything else. Yet, who can deny that by which these are experienced? So, to whom do all these experiences and their disappearance occur? To me. So the Shisha says, Oh, revered teacher, after having negated everything, by what entity then is the self to be known? And the guru says, clever are you in your capacity to discriminate. Know the self to be that by which all phenomena is known. But itself is never known as an object. You're never going to be in meditation. And, oh, there's the self going by. No, it is not an experience gain. Yet, you are not unknown. How do you know you are you? You do not see, hear, taste, touch, smell, emote, or think I. I is self-evident. It is like trying to see your eyes. It is like trying to taste your tongue. It is that by which all objects are known. But itself is known in a completely different way. It is Swayam who self evident. Don't believe me. Don't believe the Yuranya. In a quiet mind. In the space between your thoughts. See if you can notice with an introverted attentive faculty who sees the thoughts in the space between your thoughts. Now listen carefully. Then the subtle intellect has the aha. It goes, oh. I'm not a person. There's nobody there. Yet I shine. That insight, that realization happens to the subtle intellect. That is not itself 
the direct experience of the self. It's the insight gained in the subtle intellect when all the distraction has been removed. And that transforms the body. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Swayam eva nu bhutitva vidyate nanu bhavyata nyatri yanantara bhavat ye yona tva satataya. As the self is itself of the nature of experience only, it cannot be an object of experience. Since there is no experiencer nor any experience other than it, the self is unknowable, not because it does not exist, but because it cannot be an object of experience. Yes. So the scriptures say speech does not go there. The senses do not go there. The mind does not go there. They say it is unknowable, meaning the self can never be known as an object. But it is not unknown. It is self-evident. Now, there are real practical traps if you don't understand this. Back when I had my meditation center in San Francisco, I had this wonderful young man. And he had had some sort of a transformative experience on LSD 20 years prior. And he kept trying to get back to that experience now i don't know what he experienced the lsd trip convinced him that that is what the truth was but it had a beginning and an end that couldn't have been the truth because as he was there in our center, talking with me, he thought he was not experiencing the self. Who knows? The conversation is taking place right now. You are never without the self. But in the subtle intellect, because of its great subtlety, I miss it all the time. Now, there are very, very obvious example. If you are in some sort of a situation where it's completely quiet, Sometimes you can hear your own pulse, your own heartbeat. Who's had that experience? It's always there. If your pulse and heartbeat stopped, you'd be dead. But most of the time, there's too much other sensory experience. So I miss it. I don't notice it. How can I hear my own heartbeat? Remove from my perception, from my hearing, all other sounds. And what remains? That. That's what the negation of the five koshas is about. I remove from my attention 
everything that is removable, does it have a beginning and an end? Does it occur in time and space? Does it have qualities and characteristics? Is it confined to the waking dream or deep sleep state? Most importantly, is it objective phenomena? Is it knowable? In Mandukya, second chapter, fourth karika. Godapada thunders, the phenomenal world is quite unreal. The proof of its unreality is that you can see it. You will never see yourself as an object, but you are not unknown. You are constant. Any thoughts on this? And in the subtle intellect, when that awakening happens, and you go, oh my God, aham brahmasmi, I am that Brahman. Where does it go when you go to sleep? So in the end, both bonded and liberation occur in the world. Those two only I is real. Everything else is abhyasa, superimposition, patibinda, like a reflection in a mirror. Next verse. Madhur yadi subhavanam. Anyatra Swagunar Pidam Swasmi Tadarpana Peksha Nona Chatsa Nona Chastyanda Darpakam Objects of, of taste like sweet and bitter impart their tastes to others. That is their nature. They do not stand in need of their being imparted to themselves. Nor are there other things to impart those tastes to themselves. So here he's starting to talk about how fundamentally all of the phenomena in the objective world, they are by nature what we call jada, which means inert, insentient. So, for example, if I eat a chocolate, my taste buds cognize the chocolate. Mmm, sweet, good. But who knows it? My elbow is known the chocolate. No. One thought can't know another thought. One feeling can't know another feeling. Now listen carefully. This is where it gets really weird. So, if I look over there on the couch, I see Vinayak. Is he a sentient being? Depends on what you mean. With reference to me, my body is inert. It has prana, motion. But it does not know itself. I know it. So why do I think the Nayak's body is a sentient being? Now there is a sentient being within the Nayak that's knowing his body, mind, intellect. 
but it's not his body that is sentient. In fact, the poets talk about it, how the eyes are the windows to the soul. Magic holes in eternity. But when you look into another person's eyes, a conscious sentient being is looking out. Conscious being is not like you, it is you. Next verse. Arpa Kanta Arpa Kantara Rahitye Pastye Shantat Swabhavata just as there is nothing to hinder a thing from possessing its natural flavor, even without being flavored by another thing, even so the self there stands four square as the experience, that is the awareness, even when it is not experienced as an object of experience. Yes. So a thing has its own inherent swabhava, self nature. Fire burns. It doesn't need something to add to it. Sugar is sweet. That's its nature. Water is wet. I can wet the dishes when I wash them. I adding wetness to them. I can add fire to the food and cook it. That's a different thing than something's inherent nature. I illumine everything. Its existence is made known because of me. But there need be no other entity to illuminate me. I do not know myself the way in which stuff And if I continually examine the nature of me, earthless, shameless, without quality, vast and empty, yet full of being, endless, deathless, Golly, that's all the stuff we talk about God, isn't it? So funny. The prophet Isaiah in the Hebrew scripture has a line that says, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. It's not like God's my pal next to me. God is so with us because God is my very being. When are you ever not you? God never leaves you.
All right, next verse. Swayam Jyoti Bhavat Yesha yes. Puro Smyad Bhasate Khilat Tameva Bhantaman Veti Tad Bhasa Bhasyate Jagat The Shruti declares, quote, this Atman, this Atman is self-revealing. Before the evolution of the universe, the self alone was shining. It shining, all follow, that is shine, by its nature, the universe shines, that is, is revealed. So, we have this wonderful expression, Swayam Jyoti, which comes from the scriptures. Jyoti means like a light. It is self-lighted, self-luminous, self-effulgent. So the lamp here is that which lights all the objects in the living room because it's dark. But I don't need a second light to shine on the lamp. The lamp is by nature luminous. So also, the self is that which lights everything. Nothing can be known without it being illumined by consciousness. Yet consciousness itself is self evident self -luminous. Now, the quantum physicists are getting so close to the Vedanta. Vinayak, you're a scientist. Help me out here if I'm getting it wrong. But the idea is, if something is not observed, there's just the probability of it existing as matter and it basically functions as like energy but once you start to attempt to measure it then it begins to show up as like like photons like particles if i understood that right mm -hmm. yeah what they're saying is the very act of knowing is what concretizes matter it's what reifies it you mean if i don't look at the galaxies they just go poof into energy or something ah who's doing the knowing they have microcosm the jiva It is by the knowing of it that it all proceeds. But it never leaves its fundamental nature. Just like at night, your mind manifests as the dreamer inhabiting a dream body with a dream ego knowing a dream world outside and a dream subtle world of thoughts and feelings inside ultimately it's just your mind refracting like with a prism into that triple factor no or knowing It's a real experience, but it's not substantially anything other than the mind. Well, this is a real experience. No one ever doubts. The scriptures never say that we don't experience the world. 
what they say is we're confused. It's not what we think it is. We think it's material and concrete and separate from scripture saying, oh no, it just seems like that. It's like a dream. It's just consciousness and it really never leaves its swab. Sachidananda. It's form, it's existence, consciousness, and bliss. Next verse. Yenedam Janate Sarvam. Tatke nan ye na janatam, vignat taram, kena vidyat, shaktam vedam tu sadhanam. How can that by which the whole universe is known be known by anything else? By what can the knower be known? The mind, etc., the instruments of knowledge can know their own percepts only. So this is a rhetorical question. So the self shining through the intellect, through the mind, through the senses makes contact with the world of name and form. It is the knower of the field in all fields. There is a chapter about that in Gita. Chetra Chetranya. The field and the knower of the field. But the knower itself needs no other entity. There's not like consciousness one aware of consciousness two. No. And itself is why I'm Jyoti. Self luminous, self not known, self evident. Next verse. So, Vedi Vedyam Tat Sarvam Nanya Tasyasti Vedita 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 Bhyam Vedita Vedita Bhyam Tat Prithak Bodha Swarupakam The self knows all that is knowable. There is no one to know it. It is consciousness or knowledge itself and is different from both the known and the unknown as also of the knowable and the unknowable. Yes. What is that by which everything is known? What is that by which things are not known? Do you know how many objects are in the Kuiper belt? <coughs> do you? No. 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 Do you know that you do not know it? Ignorance itself is an object of knowledge. The self knows existence. The glass exists. I can break the glass. Oh, it's broken. It does not exist anymore. Do you know it doesn't exist? Yes, I know it doesn't exist. But the way in which you know you in a completely different dimension. Actually, it's outside of time and space. Oh, that sounds so wackadoo, Jim. It is. But because it's so common, so ordinary, so constant so me I disregard it I discount it 
I do not treasure it or value it. gets me in all sorts of trouble. Not the self that gets my personality into all sorts of trouble. Self is never even really covered by ignorance. The most miserable of creatures still knows that they exist. That they know their misery. It's always there. Always there. Next verse. O te yanu pavo yasya na kathanchana jayate na katham bodhaye chastram loshtam narasamakritam. How can a man teach scriptures to one who is a man only in form, but who is so dull as not to experience what consciousness is in every act of knowing a thing? So some of us thank God we don't have the Yuranya as a teacher. Some of us, our minds are a bit grosser than others. And we hear this over and over and over again. Our minds won't drop. We don't have that vijnana, that aproksha jnanam, that direct experience. I can remember when I was uh, at Amaji's ashram in Kerala in 1994. I was there about 10 days. Great saint. Hundreds of people there and thousands would come and line up. And then they'd get up to her and they'd say, should my son marry this girl? Should I go into business with so-and-so? They were treating her as a fortune teller. She answered their questions as best she could. But most of us ask the wrong questions. Vidyaranya doesn't address it, or he hasn't yet. But in Viveka Chudamani, we have the seven questions. These are the questions to bring to the Guru. Not your sex life. Not your business problems. What is bondage? How has it come about? How does it continue to exist? How can I get out of it completely? What is the not self? Who is the real self? What is the process of discrimination between the two? Those are the questions to take to the Guru. Most gurus, out of their compassion for the suffering of others. What should I do about my mother? Will do his or her best to answer your question. So again, Shankara says, success in spiritual endeavors is in 
entirely do. Three of the qualifications of a food student becoming a happy guy. Other factors such as time and place, though important, fundamentally second. Oh, Jim, I haven't found the powerful enough guru yet. Oh, I'm really trying to understand this, understand that. I'll tell you what you need to do. Viveka, Vairagya, practice Shamani Guna, increase your Mumukshutva. And if all of that isn't enough, love the Lord. Bhakti, the Lord, the Supreme. I'm not making this up. Scripture says. If we're having problems in our sadhana, Swamiji always used to say, Go back to the qualifications of a fit student and do a tune-up. It's like if your car is running rough, you've got a cylinder that's missing. Take it to the shop and get a tune-up. Do some sadhana. Check out the qualifications of a fit student. Then your mind will be clear enough to hear the teaching with openness and sight. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Jimba misti na vet yuktir na jayai kevalam yatha na butyate maya bodhu. As it is shameful for a man to express doubt if he has a tongue or not, so also it is shameful to say, quote, I do not know what consciousness is. I must know it now, end quote. <laughs> That's very funny. Not so much shameful, just stupid. I don't know if I have a tongue or not. Are you talking? Yes, I'm talking. It's allowing you to make words. Uh, my nose. What is the eternal fact? What is it that's always here? Myself. It's far more simple than people make it. Many of us don't realize it. what I'm looking for is to get high. What I'm looking for is some what experience. Nothing wrong with that. God knows in my years of spiritual practice, I have loved spiritual experiences. They come and they go and they never pay the rent. It's another form of worldly pleasure. When realization dawns on the mind, sometimes it's Yes, I see now. But sometimes it's, oh, but I've been so stupid. It's so obvious. How can I miss it? Next verse. He's very funny. This figure on your guy. Yes, when yeah. Asmin nasti, yasmin anyasmin nasti, loke bodhas tatpad pekshane, yat bodha matra tat brahme, 
एवं धीव्र एवं ब्रह्म निश्चय from whatever objects are perceived dismiss the objects and what remains that is the pure consciousness the awareness only is brahman such an understanding is called the called the determination of the nature of brahman yes so what he say here is the same thing bhagwan uh, ramana maharshi used to say his practice of koham to whom did this feeling occur to me who am i who is the knower of the feeling to whom did this sense perception occur to me who am i to whom did this thought occur to me and then i love the practice that justin shared with us Not only who am I, but who cares? Oh, I'm so upset. Who is it that cares? Not so. Oh, I'm so angry and so upset. Who cares? That's just the mind. Oh, I really want such and such and such and such. Who cares? wonderful whatever objective phenomena arises let it go dismiss it return your attentive faculty observe Any thoughts on this? Next verse. What number are we on? We're starting to enter. Pancha kosha paridhyage sakshi bodha vasheshatah swarup swa swarupa sa eva syat shunyatvam tasyata By dismissing the objective element, that is the five sheets, what remains is the witness of the sheets. That is the real nature of the self, pure consciousness. Non-existence cannot be attributed to it. So now he's begun to take on the argument with the Shunya bodies. So... When the five she's are negated, there is nothing left yet. Something there is by which the five she's are known. If you, with faulty logic, say, oh no, ultimate reality is void. Consciousness itself is just a product of the intellect. When I negate that, ultimate reality is zero. It is an absolutely unverifiable philosophical position. Because if ultimate reality is nothing, prove it. That's like saying, I know what's beyond the end of the universe. It's unprovable, unknowable by definition. No one can ever negate consciousness itself. You can say the words, but they're meaningless. And what it actually is, is a misunderstanding of the Buddha's teaching. The Buddha taught the doctrine of anatman, 
no self. Now, in 500 BCE, the word Atman was not used precisely. Sometimes it meant the supreme self. Sometimes it meant the transmigrating soul. Sometimes it meant the body itself. It was not used with the precision we get a thousand years later. So the Buddha solved the, the linguistic problem. There's no self. You don't, you're not a person. That is a temporary thing. But never did he deny the ground of being. Just a matter of different words. So if a Buddhist says, yes, I've had Satori, I've seen the disappearance of the self. Sure you did. But to what did that occur? It happened in consciousness. It's undeniable. It's undeniable. All right, we'll quit here. And we'll get further into this discussion on the negation of the Shunya Vargas next week. What verse are we on next week? 23. 23. 23. Om Purnamada Purnamida Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Pyonamaha Hari Om Thank you all.